Hi, I'm Sarah Ansbury, and a lot of you out there are tennis players or ex-tennis players like myself, and we tend to make a lot of the same mistakes. So I want to give you one thing to focus on to start with, the common mistake that I made. Now, in, in a tennis court, if a ball is often coming at your body, you're taking it as a backhand, kind of pulling it and slicing it. Now, what happens a lot is we end up getting jammed and playing at a defensive rate. What I like to try to do is think of a more offensive shot. So if a ball's coming at my body, I'm actually going to try to turn and counterattack it as a forehand versus feeling like I've got to block it as a backhand. The more in front you are, this creates a better opportunity for you to counter as a forehand or a backhand. But if you're bent in like this and your elbows are stuck, it's going to be more difficult to create an offensive position where you really can in a regular basis. So think about creating more space in front of you so that you can go forehand or backhand, but think of the ability to hit on top of the ball instead of feeling like you're gonna come under the ball. Weight in your toes in a forward motion, okay? The closer you are to the net, the more up in front you are, we're always on top of the net. Think about it that way. You've gotta create your space and you've gotta create your energy in a higher position. We're not hitting baselines from the uh, ground strokes from the baseline. We're up here, ready to enforce ourselves, getting our hips involved and our paddle in front. So one of the bigger things that I see tennis players do, I did it as well, is when we're transitioning through the non-volley zone, the t I see a classic tennis volley. So I'm going to have uh, my partner feed me a couple balls, and it turns into a step and punch, okay? Well, the problem with this kind of classic tennis volley is a couple things. One, we don't have strings. <laughs> so it doesn't create a lot of energy as you're going through the ball. What we actually are looking at is swinging through more of our shots. We got two things to think about. Number one, I don't want to step and punch because I'm anticipating the ball's coming right back to me very quickly. So what you are looking at is more of a swinging volley through our shots. So if I'm stepping through, let's see if I can do this. One, two. So I'm finishing, I'm going right foot, then left foot so that I can keep transitioning to the net. So I'm not closing my hips, I'm actually opening up my hips and practicing my swinging volley instead of a classic double slice volley. But I do have a little tip for some of you that are racquetball players. I've recently got it out on the racquetball court and realized why I'm so bad at it. Okay? What I'm terrible at on a racquetball court is I can't get those corners and those angles and those types of things. I'm so used to clearing a ball over a net. I can't help but use my shoulders together. So one of the things that players struggle with from a racquetball perspective is, one, you've got to keep it in the court. Okay? Two, there's a thing called topspin. Okay? So very realistically, what you've got to think about is a slower swing out in front of you. But essentially, what you're doing with your non-dominant hand is using that non-dominant to keep the ball over the net as well as create topspin. So if my opponent is swinging the ball, just kind of a nice and easy one, let's go a little softer than that. Okay? So if I'm moving through a ball, a little too high, okay, let's go like a little bit more on the shoulders, okay? So what's creating the lever is right to left. Essentially what I'm thinking about is coming around the ball, okay? So what I see a lot of racquetball players do is they end up slapping the ball and it shoots out or goes down into the net, okay? So think about it from that standpoint. I've got to be a little bit taller so that I can get my shoulders engaged and I'm actually coming around and forward through a ball so that there's a downward trajectory instead of a flat forward trajectory. Another thing to think about as a racquetball player, don't forget to learn cross court. Cross court is a huge factor in being able to manipulate the ball, but use your directionality and utilize the court.